Welcome back. In the last video, I showed how two wire smoke detectors are wired to a conventional panel. I showed what happens when they go into alarm. And I mentioned that since they are powered up off of the same circuit um, that detects the alarms, the zone, there's a limit to how many of them can be in alarm at the same time. So if you had 10 smoke detectors on a circuit, maybe three or four of them could be in alarm, but all 10 of them couldn't. And in circum certain circumstances, that matters. And so now we're going to talk about four wire smoke detectors. Um, when, you, when you do need all of them to be able to go into alarm at the same time, you use a four wire smoke detector. And first of all, if you look at the panel down here, I added something, which is resettable power. So in previous videos, we used non-resettable power, and we used it to go through the alarm relay and hold doors open so that you dro they drop out an alarm, and also to go through the alarm relay on the panel and then and trip another relay. But this is that was non-resettable power. This is resettable power, and what that means is if I walk up and push the reset button, this is going to drop out for five seconds or so. There's going to be no voltage on here, and I'll explain why that's somewhat significant in a minute. So the green circle up here is the four wire smoke detector. Um, you see eight terminals on here, but each one is kind of duplicated because we have an in and out. So on the right, we have power. Now in the two wire smoke detector, the power was both, you know, the power to power up the device. And it was also what would increase the, the load essentially once the, the detector went into alarm and that would put the zone into alarm. But on this, the two are separate. So let's start by drawing this out. Let's draw power first. So resettle the power to the power side of the smoke detector. We got negative and now positive. So now the smoke detector has 24 volts power. The light's gonna be blinking and it's going to be working. Now it can detect smoke. So what happens when it detects smoke? Well, this little switch here is going to short out. In a normal state, it's open like it is now. If I were to spray some smoke into the chamber, it would go into alarm, and nothing would happen on this power side, but on this side, this switch would close. So the zone is gonna be drawn to here. So let's do that now. We'll take positive to the left, which kinda looks like common. Well, it does look like common. And then we'll go negative to the right side. Okay, so now the, the smoke detector is still powered up, and if it were to short out, it would go into alarm, right? It would, it would short this out just like a pull station would, and it would put our zone into alarm because, because it was short, right? The current would increase, the zone would go into alarm. So that's perfect. And we, we also know that we need an end line resistor, right? So we could theoretically draw the end line resistor on these terminals. So in a normal state, it would go the, the current would flow through the negative leg, through the resistor, back through the positive leg, and back, right? Well, that's fine. That would, And then if we cut a zone wire right here, it would go into trouble, right? The zone would go into trouble. But what would happen if we cut a power wire? This wouldn't change. The, the, the relay up here does not change states when we cut a power wire. So we need to find a way to supervise that. And the way they do that is it's a little bit... A little bit hard to wrap your mind around maybe, but um, hopefully I'll do it in a way that makes it fairly easy to understand. So I'm gonna bring into the picture something I drew ahead of time, and it's called a power supervision relay. It's a lot like the relay that we've dealt with in the past, um, but it only has a little switch that is open when there's no power and closed when there is power. So let's look at this. We have this little, these little pink circles over here. That's called a coil just like we had on the, the other relay. So when there's 24 volts on the coil, this switch will close. So right now there's no power to it, the switch is open. So what we're gonna do, our, this, this power supervision relay is always gonna go at the end of a circuit. Right now we have one smoke detector, right? But we could have 10 smoke detectors and we would just take our power out of this smoke detector into the next one, zone out of here into the next one, and so on and so on until we got to the last device on the circuit. So now let's connect our negative power out of the smoke detector into this, oops, into this power supervision relay. So imagine a wire nut here, this is making a connection. And now the other side, this power has to cross over 
and connect here. Well, now this coil is energized up here. This pink coil on the power supervision relay is energized. And what that's going to do, that's going to close this switch. So bear with me while I cross this out. So now this is complete. Okay, well, what does that do? Uh, we'll get to that in a second. So we have our zone, and we know that our zone needs a resistor, right? We've come out of our zone. We've gone into basically common and normally open, so that would short out, and now we need a resistor. Instead of putting the resistor right at these terminals like I did before, we're going to come out. We're going to come back out of the smoke detector, and let's say we just tie our positive right to this switch, and we'll take our negative, And what we're going to do is we're going to put a resistor in series with this. Might be a little confusing right now. But let's follow our circuit. All right. So this is kind of crazy. We got a lot of wires going all over the place. Let's start at resettable power down here at the panel. Negative. I'll just redraw the negative circuit. Negative comes into the smoke detector, out to the coil. Right? It's energizing this coil. It comes back out. So this is a complete circuit. We have we have power there, right? So everything's powered up. And on the negative, we can do this. I mean, on the on the zone, we can do the same thing. Our we're gonna start at the negative. It goes through normally open, but it's not shorted. The smoke's not an alarm. So now it can go through the resistor. This supervision relay is now closed. This purple is a complete circuit. So the panel. So this is a complete circuit, and the panel's happy, right? It's basically all the fire alarm panel sees is this resistor. All right, so we'll undo that. Well, let's look at what happened if, let's say I open up a zone wire right here by the panel. Well, obviously that's going to go into trouble. We know that. Now the zone doesn't see the resistor, right? So that's fine. What would happen if I opened up one of the power circuits now? Anywhere, really. If I open it up here, or on any of the devices, right here on this negative leg of the circuit, or on any of the devices, imagine there were 10 of these in a row, if I'd open it up on any one of these, well now this coil is going to lose its power. Uh, it's, it's no longer going to be energized, which is going to open this switch back up. And this is kind of like the fail-safe idea, well it is the fail-safe idea that we had talked about um, with the MR201 relay when we were doing the fan shutdown in the doors. Right, If it loses power, this opens back up. Well, what happens when it opens back up? The resettable power doesn't go into trouble because resettable power is not supervised. The panel is always going to be putting voltage out on here, and it doesn't care if you use it. If you don't use it, it doesn't matter, but it's not supervised. So we need to find another way to supervise it. That's what we're doing right now. So now that we cut this wire here, this coil lost power, this switch opened up, and now it's not a complete circuit anymore on our zone. So it doesn't see the resistor. Not the, you know, there's no current flowing, so the panel, the zone would go into trouble. Okay, let's back up. All right, so now we're back to a normal condition. Um, what would happen if it went into alarm? It, well, the smoke detector's got power right now. If you sprayed smoke in here, well, this switch is going to short out. It was common normally open, now it's gonna close. And let's follow our current. We go from negative. It's going to go through this closed switch, just like if a pole station were activated, back to the panel. So that's going to be an increase in current, and the panel's going to go into alarm. So basically, the first part of it is, is pretty intuitive. You're going to run power to the smoke detector and zone to the smoke detector. The second part isn't too difficult. You just have this very simple switch that when it has power, the switch is closed. When it loses power, the switch um, opens up, and that's what causes our trouble because it no longer sees this resistor. So in a normal state, let's say you had this, let's say you, the only thing you had connected to this supervision relay were 24 volts, and then you just had these two power, these two purple wires sitting here, right? If you were to take a meter and meter these, meter the resistance of these, when nothing was hooked up to it except power on the right side over here, so you have 24 volts power coming into the coil, this is closed, you would meter a dead short. You'd meter virtually no resistance through here. And if you take that power off, now you're going to get an open. So I think that's a simple enough idea. And lastly, I mentioned this resettable power. Um, if, let's say I had a smoke detector and alarm, if I were to walk up and press reset right now, this power would drop out for, let's say, five seconds. 
So this switch would open up on the top on the supervision relay, which is not really significant, but that's the way you'd reset these smoke detectors because the power is going to drop out on these smoke detectors. It would no longer have 24 volts. So then this alarm switch, um, this normally open would go back to being open. Uh, you know, basically that's just how you would reset the smoke detector once you had an alarm. You know, you checked it out, you made sure everything was okay. You reset the smoke detector if it was a false alarm and it goes back to being open. So this is where I'm going to stop for right now. Um, I know this is kind of a, a new idea. It's kind of a, a lot to take in, but we're going to expand on it a little bit because we talked about the nursing homes and how there's door holders and stuff like that. And so they'll use four wire smoke detectors again. So I'll probably draw something very similar to this again to show you this, this idea one more time. Um, and then we're going to add an onboard relay to the smoke detector, which is a, a pretty common thing. But if this was a little bit confusing, I recommend you rewind it and, you know, watch it again. Watch it a couple times if you have to. Um, if not, move on to the next one. We'll see you in the next video.